Chapter 10 of A Popular History of the Art of Music from the Earliest Times Until the Present by W. S. B. Matthews. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Influence of the Christian Church. It is not easy to define the influence of the Christian Church in this transformation for the reason that upon the technical side it was slight although upon the aesthetic side it was of very great importance from the circumstance that all the early theoretical writers from the sixth century to the thirteenth were monks or ecclesiastics of some degree and from the very important part played by the large cathedrals in the development of polyphonic music many historians have concluded that to the church almost this entire transformation of the art of music is due this however is wide of the truth the church as such had very little to do with developing an art of music through all the early centuries the early christians were humble people for the most part who had embraced a religion proscribed and at times persecuted their meetings were private and attended by small numbers as for instance in the catacombs at rome where the little chapels in the dark passageways underground were incapable of holding more than twenty or thirty people at a time under these circumstances the singing cannot have been essentially of more musical importance than that of cottage prayer meetings of the present day in another way the church indeed exercised a certain amount of influence in this department as in all others an influence which might be described as cosmopolitan the early apostles and bishops traveled from one province to another and it is likely that the congregation in each province made use of the melodies already in existence the first christian hymns and psalms were probably sung to temple melodies brought from jerusalem by the apostles as new hymns were written something which happened very soon under the inspiration of the new faith and hope they were adapted to the best of these old melodies just as had been done continually down to nearly our own time our knowledge of the early church in this side of its activity is very limited it is not until the time of st ambrose who was bishop of milan in the last part of the fourth century that the church began to have an official music by this time the process of secularization had been carried so far that there was a great want of seriousness and nobility in the worship st ambrose accordingly selected certain melodies as being suitable for the solemn hymns of the church and the offices of the mass he himself was a poet of some originality he composed quite a number of hymns of which the most famous is that noble piece of praise te deum laudamus a poem which has inspired a greater number of musical settings than any other outside the canon of the scriptures the melodies which st ambrose collected were probably from palestine and he selected four scales from the greek system within which as he supposed all future melodies should be composed this was done most likely under the impression that each one of the greek scales had a characteristic expression and that the four which he chose would suffice for the varying needs of the hymns of the church in naming these scales a mistake was made that upon re being called the dorian and all the other names being applied improperly the series upon me was called phrygian upon fa lydian upon sol mixolydian the melodies of st ambrose were somewhat charged with ornament a fact which indicates their asian origin it is probable that a part of the melodies of the plain song still in use are remains of the liturgies of st ambrose 
the church at milan maintains the ambrosian liturgy to the present day in this action of saint ambrose we have a characteristic representation of the influence which the church has exerted upon music in all periods of its career upon the aesthetic and ethical sides the church has awakened aspirations hopes and faith of essentially musical character and in this respect it has been one of the most powerful sources of inspiration that musical art has experienced but upon the technical side the action of the church has been purely conservative and not to say it disrespectfully politic the end sought in every modification of the existing music has been that of affording the congregation a musical setting for certain hymns a setting not inconsistent with the spirit of the hymns themselves but in melody agreeable to the congregation the question which john wesley is reported to have asked why the devil should have all the good tunes has been a favorite conundrum with the fathers of the church notwithstanding the firmness with which the church at milan maintained the ambrosian liturgy in other provinces this conservatism failed and within the next two centuries very great abuses crept in through the adoption of local secular melodies not yet divested of their profane associations st gregory the great five forty to five ninety five who was elected pope about five ninety set himself to restore church music to its purity or rather to restrict the introduction of profane melodies and to establish certain limits beyond which the music should not be allowed to pass st gregory himself was not a musician he therefore contented himself with restoring the ambrosian chants as far as possible but the musical scales established by ambrose he somewhat enlarged adding to them four other scales called plagal these were the hypo dorian la to la hypo phrygian c to c hypo lydian do to do hypo aeolian mi to mi i do not understand that the terminal notes of these plagal scales of st gregory were used as key notes but only that melodies instead of being restricted between the tonic and its octave were permitted to pass below and above the tonic coming back to that as center for we must remember that in the ancient music the tonality was purely arbitrary and so to say accidental while all kinds of keys used the series of tones known by the names do re mi fa so la si do it was within the choice of the composer to bring his melodies to a close upon any one of these tones which being thus emphasized was regarded as the tonic of the melody whatever of color one key had differing from another was due therefore to the preponderance of some one tone of the scale in the course of the melody the plain song of the roman church and of the english church as well has been called gregorian from st gregory and the majority of ecclesiastical amateurs suppose that the square note notation upon four lines was invented by st gregory this however is not the case the melody very likely may have come down to us with few alterations the notation however has undergone several very important changes of which there will be more particular mention in chapter fifteen the gregorian notation of the sixth century was probably the roman letters which we find in hucbald as will be seen farther on several of the tunes well known to protestants have been arranged from the so-called gregorian chants they are boylston olmutz and hamburg the eighth tone from which olmutz was arranged has always been appropriated to the magnificat my soul doth magnify the lord the following are the ecclesiastical scales and names as established by st gregory readers note the following scales are shown on the bass clef 
the first scale includes hypodorian from a to a and dorian from d to d listen scale number two includes hypophrygian from b to b and phrygian from e to e listen scale number three includes hypolydian from c to c and lydian from f to f listen the fourth and final scale includes hypo mixo lydian from d to d and mixo lydian from g to g listen with the labors of st gregory the influence of the church upon the course of musical development by no means ceased at various epochs in its history synods councils and popes have effected various reforms every reform consisting in barring out a certain amount of novelty which had crept in and in a supposed restoration of the service to its pristine purity the restoration however has never been complete church music like every other department of the art has gone on in increasing complexity from the beginning until now the main difference between the church and the world in any century consists in drawing the line of the permissible at a different point one of the latest reforms was that begun by pope marcellus and the council of trent which ordered from palestrina an example of church music as it should be incidentally in another direction the church has been a very great influence upon the course of musical development the great cathedrals of the commercial centers of the world in the effort to render their service worthy of the congregation have afforded support to talented composers in all ages and some of the most important movements in music have been made by ecclesiastics or officials deriving support from these sources more extended particulars of this part of her influence will be given later it may suffice to mention the cathedrals of westminster and st paul in england of notre dame in paris to which we owe the old french school and the beginning of polyphony the cathedral at strasbourg which supported important musicians cologne where the celebrated franco lived st mark's at venice where from about thirteen fifty to the end of the last century an extremely brilliant succession of musical directors found a field for their activity end of chapter ten